Welcome to Real Tree Global Hunting on Team Wild TV. This week we're out with my good friend Steve Wild as he embarked on his first ever trip to Hungary on his first trip after Robot with the guys of Wonderheart. As you guys have no doubt seen, Steve has taken his fair share of deer over the years and he regularly takes fallow. red deer off his own ground. To provide venison for his butcher shop. However, roe deer is something that's eluded Steve over the years. But hopefully, not for much longer. Hi, here we are in Hungary at last. We've just traveled halfway across Europe to get here and we're shooting Roebuck. Today, we've got the Sauer 101 in 308. Because I've travelled so far, I'm just going to take a test shot into the bales there, make sure everything's working fine, and then hopefully we're off to get a roebuck down. It's the first time I've stalked roebuck in all the stalking I've done, the hundreds and hundreds of fallow I've shot, the hundreds of red that I've shot, but it's my first time on row, so I'm really, really excited. So just going to put a shot down the range now, make sure we're all good to go, and then it's bingo time, hopefully. Fantastic, smack on, let's go get them. As always with roast stalking, it's best to get out late afternoon until sunset and be up and out by sunrise. Roe deer tend to bed up during the hot summer days and at this time of the year in Hungary it can get to 40 degrees centigrade. That's pretty hot. Steve's guy sets him up on sticks and some maize at the edge of a field and begins to try and call in a deer. This time of year the roebucks respond really well to female calls and they'll come bouncing in to have a look at the action. Steve's like a kid in a sweet shop and he's buzzing with excitement at the prospect of taking his first row and helping with the deer management in these parts. All across the globe, the key to a good healthy deer herd is management and it's absolutely no different in Hungary. Steve's on strict orders to take out an older buck or anything that the guy would want to take him from the herd. You see next to these two maize um, crops with a bit of um, clear fell in between. Um, nothing showing, so I think we're moving on somewhere else. Unfortunately, our guide doesn't speak much English, so it's points, nods and winks at the minute, but everything seems to be going great. In the next field, there's some movement. And a rat comes meandering towards a pair of them. Unfortunately, he's only young and he hasn't reached his prime yet. He spotted Steve in the guide, he doesn't look that bothered. Being so young, he isn't familiar with the dangers of humans. But he is a little bit on edge, and he's very inquisitive. He continues to move towards them, and as he feeds away, he gets close enough that Steve can almost pet him. Steve's over the moon with having this young roebuck in such close proximity. But unfortunately, the little guy's no longer happy with him and he starts to bark. If he's barking, he's going to scare away all the other bucks this evening, so they decide to move on. Steve's guide takes him to high seat as the summer sun begins to fade, and they have a go at calling once again. I 
However, there isn't any movement, and again they move on. In the next field, the guide spots something. There's a doe and a fawn at the opposite end of the field. And if there's a female roaming these parts, there could easily be a male following a scent. Steve and the guide get set up in the maze for cover and give out a few calls. That for tonight. Resume play first thing in the morning, as I say. It's been a fantastic experience tonight. It's the first time I've um, been Robux stalking, let alone called Robux. And to see that little fella come right in within 10 foot of us was absolutely fantastic. I've seen quite a few does with a few calves with them as well. So um, it's been a really, really exciting night for myself and um, looking forward to get back to it in the morning. And these midges are biting like the devil. It's day two and Steve is out nice and early with his guide. The sun is blazing down and it's a scorcher of a day. The first port of call is a recently cut field with hay bales strewn across it, providing plenty of cover. The guide lets out a few calls. And soon enough there's a row. The guide lets out some calls. The robot seems interested. The buck is heading towards the guy. All seems well and he seems comfortable. Then he stops. He sees the pair of them and makes a run for it. A few gentle calls from the guide and he stops in his tracks. But he doesn't think the call of a woman is worth the risk and heads off into the thick stuff. Good decision, my friend. Good decision. Steve is out again that afternoon, but with it being such a warm day, the deer are hot and bothered before he even gets there. So, as soon as they see a human, they ain't planning on sticking around. The guard explains that the heat makes the deer uncomfortable and they don't respond well to the calls. Luckily, the weather on day three is a lot cooler and there's an early morning mist in the air. With the previous day being so hot, the deer would have been laid up and now they'll be out looking for food and females. In the very first field, there's a nice buck skipping across the field between the two plots of maize. However, he isn't sticking around and doesn't respond to the call. Steve moves a little further down the field and into a position behind a hay bale. The guide lets out some calls. There's a young buck who looks interested to start with, but he soon bugs out. The guide changes his call and Steve glasses down the field. There's another two deer at the end of the field, but these are does and that's not what Steve's here for. He's been carrying the Sour 101 for three days now and he's dying to test its capabilities on the Hungarian Roadbox. But the only thing he's managed to shoot at so far Here's a giant hay bale. The sun is rising, but the mist is getting thicker as the guys carry on the search for a good management buck. There's plenty of young bucks around, and even a few bunnies, but nothing that needs managing. Man, it's beginning to feel like a really long day. As the mist begins to lift, the guide takes Steve back to the field that he saw movement in the previous day. Steve sets up in the maze with his guide and after a few calls, a road comes trotting into the field.
then as she legs it, a bot comes from nowhere to chase her around. But he's not interested in the call of another day when he's got one in his sights, and soon enough they disappear in the maze. The day now is in full flow. The mist has lifted and the sun is beaming down. It's almost time to call it a day, but the guide has one more field to try. Once again, Steve gets set up in the maze. The guide calls and they wait. Not much appears to be moving and then a roadblock emerges to the right. He almost starts away, but a call stops him in his tracks. Just enough time for Wilder to get him in his sights. He fires. And the buck turns to leg it. It looks like a good shot, but the buck still escaped out of the field. Wilder's eager to get after it, just in case he has to take another shot on it. Him and the guard make their way down the field, but as soon as they reach the maze at the end, it's clear the buck is hit hard, and it couldn't have gone far. They move through the maze, and they haven't got far before they find the falling game. A sense of excitement is overpowered by a feeling of relief in Steve as he finds his very first robot led in the maze. With Hungary having some amazing traditions with regards to hunting, Steve's guide is keen to share with him their way of celebrating the fallen game. A leaf in the mouth of the deer is for his last meal. A leaf on the wound, and the third dipped in the animal's blood, Come on, the gang. for Steve to celebrate his hunt. Okay, as you saw, we were still on the end of the maze. He came out, he was um, 80 yards, I think, on the range finder before he ran, and then he just went out a bit like that. Um, I took my shot, just behind the shoulder, absolutely smack on. Um, he went as if he hadn't been touched. And um, to be honest, I doubted myself. But as soon as we got to the maze where he went in, you could see the massive blood trail. Really, really chuffed. My first ray book um, is about six years old, so to say. It's going backwards, so perfect one to take out. Chuffed to bits, you wouldn't believe it. Sour 101 in 308, it's done its thing again. I can't believe it didn't knock it off its feet, but hey, they're a big, strong animal, right? Good stuff, chuffed to bits. It's been really hard work for the last three days. But Steve has seen plenty of deer. and has eventually managed to get his first robot. However, it's not over yet, and as soon as the guys get their butt back to base, there's more tradition to partake in, and Tamas ensures Steve gets the full Hungarian treatment. With this being his first ever robot, it's tradition in these parts for Steve to bend over his fallen game, and for the other row hunters present to celebrate his hunt with him, and to slap his backside with a stick. Now, Steve Wilde is an accomplished Hungarian robot hunter. To book your own Hungarian hunting trip of a lifetime, visit wonderheart.co.uk. And for more information on the awesome Sour 101, visit garlands.uk.com. Subscribe to Team TV for all the best hunting shows on YouTube.